Hello friends, as a part of Snippet series, so I'll be covering with 2024 IDSA guidelines for NDMs or MBLs, which is metallobetalactamases, or NDM, which was notoriously called as New Delhi metallobetalactamases, uh, which uh, are commoner sort of an enzyme producing CREs, which we see commonly in ICU. And we need to have clarity on what the latest guidelines suggest, because there is a de-emphasis on polymyxin or polystin sort of a combinations in the new guidelines. And I'll show you a bit of a data on this. Just to re-emphasize, this guidelines came in 2024. It's good to refer to this as a document to exercise a proper sort of a antibiotic stewardship in our practice and the right choice of antibiotics for these life-threatening infections. So again, to uh, re recapitulate our memory, the common CREs are Enterobacter's E. coli, which we commonly see. Enterobacter, Klebsiella is something. So E. coli, Enterobacter, and Klebsiella is something we see commonly in our ICU, Morganella, Pseudomonas, more in immunocompromised and serratia marcescens, we tend, we tend to see in more of long-term ICU patients who are deconditioned or decompensated. We saw one patient recently with serratia, not uncommon at all, and they are CRE producers, and most commonly they can produce this NDM or MBL sort of an enzyme. Just to recapitulate our, uh, our beta-lactamase family with the Amblers classification, so these are enzymes which are produced by these organisms to confer resistance to most of the antibiotics we tend to have beta lactam rings. So which is OSBL, which is ordinary spectrum beta lactamases, ESBLs, extended spectrum beta lactamases, which has two classes, class A and class D, which belongs to serine producers and AMC. So the easy way to remember this AMBLAS is you remember ADC and ADB. Most of them have class A, class D and class C. And uh, AMC is class C. In carbapenemases, again, you would divide into serine and MBL. Serine, it is class A, and class A is KPC, and class D is OXA48, and metallobetalactamases, as I said, ADC and ADB, it belongs to B class, which is NDM, Vim, and IMP. So these are the enzymes which confer resistance to carbapenemases, which we have already spoken, so just to recapitulate our memory. So the question is, what are the preferred antibiotics for the treatment of infections outside the urinary tract caused, it's outside the urinary tract caused by CRE. If your multiplex PCR shows that there is an NDM gene or NDM gene-coded enzymes that are produced or metal or beta lactamases, the choices are very limited. So there is no suggestion for polymyxin or polymyx, uh, polystin. It is only septazidine, abibactam or launched with. So there was a question posed to me based on the previous video. Not all CREs are NDM. So not all CREs need combination of astronom. So if it is NDM or MBLs, we need to add astronom. And I'm going to say why we need to add astronom for that. The other choices is Tepterecol, which is at this point of time, it is unavailable. So we are all looking forward to have this drug uh, and use it judiciously for these choices. And more than 90% of NDM CREs show activity against septicidium avibactam. So the question which I was posed in one of the groups by someone that CRE, we need to add astronym, not all CREs, because I had answered that only someone who produces NDM, VIM, IMP, we need to add astronym. The reason is, and the sensitivity to septicidium avibactam with astronym, the CLSI, breakpoints need to be derived from the broth disc elution method. That is something one needs to do. And you cannot rely on MIC for your sensitivity. One has to do broad disc elution method to determine sensitivity to septicidema vibactam and this combination. So why we add astronam is the NDM producers or MBLs hydrolyzes the beta ring, which is present in many of the antibiotics that we tend to use. NDMs have a notorious ability to hydrolyze the beta-lactam ring in penicillin, cephalosporins, and carbapenems. Even carbapenems have beta-lactam ring, and they hydrolyze and they inactivate this drug. But NDM and MBLs have no ability to hydrolyze your astronam. That is why we add astronam. But astronam can be hydrolyzed by other enzymes like ESBLs, AMC, KPC, and OXA. So this, remember this picture, NDMs hydrolyze the beta-lactam ring in the antibiotics we use, but NDMs do not hydrolyze astronam. That's why we add astronam to septazidim avibactam in NDM and MBL producers. So studies favoring septazidim avibactam. So this was a study that came from the Italian group 
published in 2023 by Falcon et al., where they had 82 NDMs uh, and 102 MBLs. When I say metal or beta lactamers, it can be VIM gene or IMP gene also. It's not only NDM. So in that, 82 were NDM genes, 52 were in surfacity mavibactam, 50 was in polymyxin, polystyrene, and tigicycline, sort of a combination group. The 30-day mortality, if you see, was significantly less in surfacity mavibactam, 19% as compared to the polymyxin and polystyrene and tigicycline sort of a combinations. That's why the suggestion for polymyxin has been removed in 2024 guidelines for these sort of a CREs with NDM and MPLs. And this was the same Italian group, Falcon, which again published uh, this particular study where they compared septazidim avibactam with septerocol and colistin. So they had 215 in septazidim avibactam, 33 in septerocol, 26 in colistin. 30 day mortality, if you see, was significantly less in septazidim avibactam, 22% as opposed to 33% in septerocol, 50% in colistin. So these two studies very clearly show. The superiority of septicidium abibactam in influencing a good clinical outcome uh, in patients with NDM MBL CRE. That's why there is a strong suggestion for septicidium abibactam. And when, when someone is using septicidium abibactam, please monitor liver enzymes. 40% of the patients show a little bit of a creep in the liver enzymes. It's good to monitor them when septicidium abibactam with astronomy is being used. And what is the evidence for septeracol? Septeracol, 92% of NDM MBL uh, CREs were found to be susceptible to septeracol. So there is one study that came from the France, but there is a concern now of emerging resistance to septeracol. So this is a small study that came from the French group where they looked at 14 MBLs, 10 in septeracol, 4 in the polymyxin. If you look at the clinical, it's a very small study, can't take home much. That's why septeracol is positioned second. So the drug of choice would be septazidim avibactam with astronom becomes the first choice because the clinical cure rate, as you see, was 80% in septeracol. It was 0% in polymyxin. And even day 28 mortality was 10% in septeracol and 75% in polymyxin. So this is the reason why polystyrene-based combinations are removed from, from the drug of choice for MBLs or NDM CREs. So this is a sort of a loud message. Please bear in mind, don't use polystyrene and polymyxin sort of a combinations for NDM, MBLs, TREs. And we have to put more emphasis on these suggested drugs. And other desperate alternatives, if you're unable, for whatever reason, you're unable to use septazidim, which is very much easily available in India and septazidim, we're all awaiting. These astronam in combination with miropenem, vaporbactam, or astronam in combination with imipenem, relibactam, can be used as a desperate option. Stigiocycline, aravacycline, has been suggested, but look at the choice. This uh, They have suggested, but all, also they have said this cannot be used for UTI and bacteremia. Most of the patients we tend to see in ICU are mainly UTIs and bacteremia. So pretty much you can ignore this or desperate uh, other alternatives and stick to septazidim, avibactam, and septeracol if it all comes. And don't use polymyxin polystin for NDM, MBL, CREs. I think that would be the message. So thank you, friends. Uh, request you all to submit your valuable work to Journal of Acute Care. And of course, you can visit my website to rehear to this lecture. Thank you. Thank you.